In this video, I'm going to show you guys my top 10 things to do in Asakusa. Asakusa has one of the oldest temples in Tokyo and is like one of the prime spots for tourists to come. In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through my top 10 favorite spots to go that you definitely have to check out when you come here. All right, I'm so excited. Let's go do this. Number one. Street food at Nakamise. Nakamise has some killer street food with more history than my Chrome browser. There's 89 stores here that leads to Sensoji. This is where you want to go if you want to have some street food or souvenirs, also known as omiyage. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, but there's already so many people, so I generally try to avoid this place because I just get so claustrophobic, but this will probably be your first stop when coming here, but it shouldn't be your last. One of my must-eat foods is a kibidango from Azuma. The kibidango is made with a freshness and even today they make it the same way as it was during the Edo period. Green tea and it comes in a paper bag. We have the kibidango, look at that. Mm, it's still warm. The mochi is so good. Mm, it's coming off. And for my wagashi lovers, I recommend spotting up at Kiku Suido. This is the Age Manju. This is the most popular sweets that they have there. It's a fried dessert. Check that out. It's so pink. Mm. Interesting texture. It almost tastes like tempura. Like, it tastes like that when you take the first bite. Then when you get inside, it's actually like the sweet red bean base. And it's even like a little bit salty when you like you bite. It's delicious. This is Ichigo Daifuku and it's a seasonal dessert at the store because they only want to use Japanese strawberries. Oh. That is sensational. It's just so juicy when I took that first bite. All of that juice just like squirted out. And once you're done filling up your food bucket, take a James Harden step back and watch the food craftsman go to work on his sweets, like Bruno Mars to his dance. Number two, Sensoji. Sensoji is the main landmark at Asakusa. The first thing you see is the Kami Narimon Gate, with the God of Thunder to the left and the God of Wind to the right. Interesting fact, the huge lantern in the middle was donated by Panasonic. Hashtag not sponsored. And this behind me is Sensoji. This is the oldest temple here in Tokyo. I just love the architecture. It's just so freaking old school. All right, so this is Omikuji. It costs 100 yen and you can get your fortune. So you have to match that symbol you got in the stick with the, one of these boxes. That was a Kyujuroku, which is 96. This one. All right, so here's my fortune. I got one of the best fortunes, but if you got a bad fortune, you can tie it over there, and it pretty much means that you're asking the god to help you with a bad fortune. And there's actually multiple shrines that you can check out here. Just before you rock up to Sensoji, you'll see Fudo-san. And this guy is supposed to help you heal, so wherever you touch, it's gonna help you heal yourself. Let's heal everything. And to the west of Sensoji, you'll find some more dope shrines. This is Yogodo Hall. There's actually 12 different gods to worship, and each one is assigned to your birth year. So when you go inside, you have to find your particular god to worship. Pretty cool. And you can check out Gojunoto. And this is Awashimado, the guardian of women. And today is actually Buddha's birthday. And like all epic birthday parties, all the women rock up with their stylish crane hats to celebrate the flower festival, Hanamatsuri. So one little tip for you guys when you're walking back from Sensoji, right there is the Nakamise main street. But when you're walking back, then you, what you want to do is walk on the back street. This is a back street that has a lot of cool stuff. And then there's like more stuff down these Shoten guys. Number three, Kimono Rental. 
This is Wargo. It's a kimono rental place. You can actually rent a kimono and walk around Asakusa. And they have so much variety. But don't worry if you don't want to go to this place. There's a lot of them in Asakusa. Look at all the different choices. The package usually includes everything from sandals to hair accessories. So no worries unless you want extras. Also, these places do get uber busy. So best to make your reservation so you can get your no hassle geisha on. So the basic rate for a kimono rental is about three to four thousand but if you start going wild and doing a bunch of different options then it's gonna cost you a little bit more number four side streets if Sensoji is the head of Asakusa the side streets are the heart and soul check it out you'll feel like you've Marty McFly to the Edo world there are so many fascinating streets in this area and one of the most well-known streets is Dempo in Dori and on the local tip if you're looking for authentic souvenirs I recommend spending more time here than at Nakamise hey and just a little tip for you guys this street right here has some pretty cool shutter art this store is closed right now but at night all of the stores close and all of them have the shutters down and there's just really really cool art and this street is like lit up and there's barely anyone here definitely worth checking out when you come here at night just behind Sensoji you'll find this Nishi Sando Shotengai a wooden floor shopping street you can find some decent kimonos and some good eats here they even have halal food here. Also, there's an orange street, obviously because the road is orange. Shin Nakamise for more souvenirs. Osushiya street for guess what? Sushi restaurants and a ton more. Number 5. Sumida Park. And this is Sumida Park. It's an awesome place to just hang out and chill. Just check out this view. You have Tokyo Sky Tree and you have the Sai Building which looks like a golden turd. What people don't know about, it's actually supposed to be a golden flame. It's right by the water so you can watch the boats go by or you can just like sit at one of the park benches here and just have a drink or have a snack during cherry blossom season. This is one of the places to definitely go. And there's Azumabashi that goes right over Sumida Meet a river so relaxing and peaceful. Number six, Monja Lunch. When I come to Asakusa, Daikichi is my local Monja shop. Can't get more local than this. And my favorite is the Mentaiko Special. Look at that Mentaiko in there. It's just one whole Mentaiko. Some ebi and some cheese. There's even mochi in here. What's really nice about this place is it's kind of away from the tourist spot, so there's only locals here. All right, now that it's all chopped up and ready to go, you make a little hole right like this, and then pour the soup. Oh no. Oh, completely messed it up. But, I mean, you guys are probably messed it up too. Well, I don't know, but, you know, it's okay. It's still good. Look, she's so... All right, let's try the first one. This is kind of like a snack version of okonomiyaki. Looks kind of like mama. Mmm, it really tastes the mentaiko. So the soup has dashi and it's marinated, so you actually don't really need any sauce for this. It's like really, really good just as it is. And what's nice about this place is they have an English menu. It's not the full menu, but it actually has all of the basics, which is nice. They also have other tepan menus. Today, I threw down on some garlic butter whelk and yakisoba. Number seven, Asahi beer with a view. Yoo-hoo! And this is the Asahi building, right where that golden turd is. What a lot of people don't know is that you can go up into the building and check out this awesome view while having a cold Asahi beer. Let's do that now. We just made it to the 22nd floor of the Asahi building. Come by. Right behind me, you can see Sensoji, you can see Sumida Park, you can see Sumida River, and you can even see Sky Street just over there. Can life get any better than this? Number eight, Hoppy Street. This is Hoppy Dori. It has a whole bunch of little izakayas where people come here even starting during the day and start to get their wasty face on. This used to be a place for locals, but over time it's been overrun by tourists. So come here, you're not going to feel too out of place because there will be some tourists around this area. When if you don't drink, then you can just get some food, but definitely a place for drinking. 
number nine, Hanayashiki Amusement Park. It's the oldest amusement park in Japan. It's like a small Disneyland here in Asakusa. Well, maybe I exaggerated by saying little Disneyland. Let's go inside and check it out. Hi, konnichiwa. Thank you. Have a nice time. Oh, thank you. So I'm inside and it's like pretty crowded for a Sunday. Look how many people there are just all around. It's 1,000 yen to get in, which is pretty reasonable. The rides cost extra, but it was only about another 1,000 yen to get on three rides. Don't mind if I do. It's pretty badass. We have the ugliest ship in the whole entire lot. It's like one of those buried ships, but man, this is awesome. Look right there. You can see Sky Tree. One, four, three, two, one. So on a weekend, the line is about 30 to 40 minutes long. Check out behind me. But on the weekdays, it's actually not that busy. Number 10, all you can eat and drink boat ride, aka Yakatabune. Yakatabune is a Japanese style boat where you can enjoy a traditional Japanese dinner while taking in an epic view of the city. If you want to check out a simple river boat ride, check out Tokyo Cruise. This behind me is a Yakatabune. You can actually get on the boat behind me and ride it up the river. I'm going to do a separate video just on this, so wait for it in the next video and it's going to go through the ins and outs of the whole entire experience. But now let's just do a short clip. Back in the days, high rank samurais and rich merchants used to party it up in these luxury boats on Sumida River. So now, you know how to party like a samurai. There's a wide variety of cruise companies and different meal plans with and without all you can eat and drink. The one I'm riding today is Amise. You can easily board at the dock next to Azumabashi. Look at all this food. We have the tempura, we have the edamame, we have the appetizers, and even the sushi. So one of the things about this is is that when you get on one of these Yakatabune rides, when you make the reservation, you have to specify what kind of meal you want. They have very expensive and very low cost meals at the same time. Ours was about 8,000 yen, and we also got the all you can drink plan, which includes beer. <sighs> the best part is, they serve sizzling hot tempura one after another throughout the entire meal. Definitely not good for those on a diet. It's simply amazing. And when it gets dark outside, they turn down the lights so you can sit back and enjoy the city nightscape. Wow, look at behind me at Sky Tree. So beautiful. All right, so that concludes my top 10 at Asakusa. If this video helped you out, help me out and hit that like button. And like always, if you want to see more adventures in Tokyo or in Japan, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.